Hey guys, what is going on? Happy draft day. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be reacting to our last mock draft before the NBA draft. This is an ESPN Plus article. It's an updated NBA mock draft from Jonathan Gavoni. So he's got a lot of scoops in this article, a lot of intel that he's hearing from a lot of these executives. Um, and we'll react to the first four picks. Maybe scroll down a little bit because there are some prospects that I'm kind of interested to see where they might uh, go if there's any intel um, on them because I'm just a, a, a draft junkie. I love this stuff. But let's get straight into it, you guys. So the first selection is the Hawks. And who's mocked to the Hawks? Zachary Richeche out of France, small forward. This has been a consistent player that has been mocked. Uh, mocked. I don't know why I said mocked like that. Some, mocked. I don't know. Whatever. Um, this has been a player <laughs> that has been linked to them probably since what? Like May? Um, Gavoni does have a little bit to say uh, with the selection. It says the Hawks can continue, continue to the signal. Uh, they have not yet determined on their draft like direction which makes sense considering the nature of this draft, how even the talent is top, and the trade opportunities that could unfold once they're on the clock. Now, there has been a lot of reporting that the Hawks may look to trade with the Spurs because if you guys remember, DeJounte Murray was traded to the Hawks from the Spurs. The Spurs have a lot of the Hawks' future first. I think they have a 2025 first, a 2026 swap and a 2027 first still from that trade. So there could be a situation where the Spurs go up from four to one to possibly select Zachary Richeche, Alex Sar, whoever they want with the first overall pick. So that is something to keep an eye on. Gavoni also goes on to say, I'm going to skim past this right here. Donovan Klingon is another favorite of the Hawks coaching staff and remains and play it number one, but he might be more realistic options if the Hawk trade down a few spots with the San Antonio Spurs. Just just what I was saying, like the Spurs have been a, a team that Gavoni has reported, Yahoo has reported, all these media sites have been reporting that the Hawks could possibly uh, trade down with the San Antonio Spurs. Let's go over to Washington and see who he has the Wizards selecting. Washington Wizards number two, Alex Sar. Again, Sar has kind of been in this range, one to two, depending on which mock draft you guys are reading. I think this is a very good fit, not only for Washington, but for Alex Sar. Now, Cavoni does have a little bit of intel um, with Alex Sar, and it says, with days to go until the draft, rival teams are viewing Washington as Sar's likely destination. Sar is not worked out for Atlanta at number one, although the Hawks have continued to try to bring him in. Now, there's been some reporting on this, why Sar hasn't worked out with the Hawks. And the main thing that a lot of these guys, a lot of these reporters, analysts have been saying is, Sar views himself as a power forward, not a center. The Hawks view him as a center. Sar at the NBA level wants to play power forward. So he could kind of be forcing his way to Washington, which I think it's a good fit. I think Washington has a very nice young core with Koulibaly. Um, you, you'd be adding Sar to that, Denny Avdia. Um, and they have some, you know, older veterans like Kuzma, Bagley, and others. Um, I think this would be a really good fit for Alex Sar. But we're going to go over down to the third overall pick with the Houston Rockets. So let's get into that. Number three, Houston Rockets. Mock to take, Reed Shepard out of Kentucky. Now, the New York Knicks threw a monkey wrench in the Rockets' plans, probably. You guys probably saw last night, the Knicks unloaded, they got Mikel Bridges. They're going to be the Villanova Knicks. Villanova Knicks, right? Now, there was reporting earlier last month that the Rockets were in trade talks with the Nets about possibly trading this third pick for Mikel Bridges. That's obvi that obviously didn't happen. Uh, Gavoni does have some intel um, with what Houston may do. And it says, this pick has been in trade conversation since the moment the Rockets got it in the draft lottery. 
and it's likely it will continue to be uh, to be attainable until the NBA Commissioner Adam Silver announces the number three selection. Many NBA teams are operating under the assumption it will be moved in their uh, internal mock drafts, but that's difficult to plan for considering how rare these types of trades are from a, uh, from a historical perspective. So, I honestly think if Houston wants to trade down, they will. I don't think they're going to trade up. I think Houston, if you kind of look at their team, just missed the playoffs, have a lot of young talent. Um, I mean, if they can't move it, I think Reed Shepard would make a whole lot of sense for them. One of the best shooters coming out of this uh, draft, if not the best shooter. Um, and he, he could fill a role right away off the bench, or maybe you want to start him. I don't know. Um, but I, I think Reed Shepard does make a whole lot of sense. Let's go to number four, San Antonio Spurs. See who ESPN uh, is mocking to them. Number four, the San Antonio Spurs. So ESPN has them mocked to take Stefan Castle. Now, we talked about the Hawks and possibly being a trade partner for the Spurs, and that's what Gavoni does talk about, is, you know, if, if the Spurs want to go up to one and select Rishishe, they have the assets to do it. They have the first from the DeJounte Murray trade. They have a 2025, a 2026 pick swap, and a 2027 first. Um, if they want to use that draft capital to try to get a French player that maybe Victor Wembanyama is familiar with. I personally don't know what they're going to do. I don't. I like Castle to the Spurs. I really do. I, I think that uh, a castle uh, Wembanyama pairing would actually be really fun to watch. This is a basketball fan. Not even a Pistons fan. This is like a basketball fan at the end of the day. But um, it'll be very interesting to see what the Spurs do because they do have the fourth overall pick and the eighth overall pick. But let's go to your Detroit Pistons, see who ESPN has them mocked to take, because this is a player that a lot of you guys have been really talking about all year long. Fifth pick, Detroit Pistons. Matas Bezelis out of the G League Ignite. ESPN is mocking him, too. Uh, Gavoni does have some intel. He says rival teams continue to view Bezelis and the Pistons as a likely pairing. He worked out for most of the teams in this range, including the Hawks, Wizards, Spurs, and the Charlotte Hornets. But the Pistons haven't worked out many other prospects who are ticketed for the high lottery. Other than Klingon, Cody Williams, and point guard Rob Dillingham visited but didn't conduct an on-court workout. So, I think it's interesting that they did bring in Cody Williams. They did bring in Rob Dillingham, but he didn't work out. Just a, maybe just the interview process thing. And Klingon. But we're focusing on Matas Bezelis. I think if you're a Piston fan and you're not too sure about Matas Bezelis, I think it makes sense if you want to invest in someone that defensively can switch, defensively has... Tools to protect the rim, play the passing lanes. The only thing with Matas that I think I go back and forth with is the jump shot. If the jump shot doesn't develop, um, it's not the end of the world, but you you would hope that Fred, Fred Vincent can work with Matas to develop his jump shot to at least be like a league average three-point shooter. Because if he develops some sort of jump shot, he's going to be a two-way forward on your team. Which I think that's why so many uh, Pistons fans want him. Because the tools are there. It's just the jump shot's not consistent yet. The three-point shot is not consistent yet. But he does have a, a game that would really fit nicely with this young core. With Jade Nivey, Jalen Duran, Sar Thompson, and Kate Cunningham. But... Um, not really too surprised by this pick. He's He's been a guy that has been routine, routinely mocked top four, top five, even top six I've seen. Um, not really too surprised that ESPN does have Matas as high as five in this mock draft. Let me know what you guys think of this mock draft from ESPN predicting that Matas Pizelis is going to be the fifth overall pick with the Detroit Pistons. Do you like Matas Bezelis enough to draft him with the fifth overall pick? Do you think the Detroit Pistons are possibly going to trade out of that fifth spot? Maybe trade down, maybe to the late lottery, late lottery or out of the lottery completely? Let me know down below in the comments section. I will talk to you guys down there. Like always, hope you guys are staying safe. Take care and can't wait for the draft, you guys, today. Let's go.
Peace.